Hi guys, Igor here and finally today we are going to cover some of the UV tools that Houdini offers. There are not plenty of them that that are that useful, just few, but I decided to go over I think there is one, two, three, four, four, I believe, or five. And unfortunately, not all nodes are equally useful. So let's start with the, the, the most obvious one that actually I, I like to use. So let's dive in into this barrel. And when we're doing UVs, make sure that we do, do them before setting up materials. So I will usually do grouping and then UVs because I will show you how, how groups can actually help us with, with UVs because UV tools also can utilize this grouping that, that Houdini is actually uh, really depend on. So to begin with, what I usually do is I, I would just select everything in, in primitive component mode and then just activate or invoke auto UV node. And immediately here in, in our viewport, we can see that we have some uh, UV, well, quick shading, I believe. But we can see that our node is not in the correct place. So let's put it here. Nothing will change because uh, this node doesn't, that doesn't actually change our geometry. These are just materials and this just for the position. Okay. Now, if I select this node and make sure that invoke, if I press space bar and five, our viewport, we, we get, we, bas we basically jump to our UV view. And this is the result that we get from the just one click. Now, in some cases, you know, this maybe could be a good result, but what I usually like to do is I would, I would play with, with some of these settings. Usually I try to change the flattening method. So it's just a different algorithm. So these settings are just different algorithm. Um, about how these UVs are actually unwrapped in, in this UV space. So you don't have to know how they exactly work. It's just enough that you, you know, change the settings and see how it looks. And also you can see it here. If there is any stretching or skewing, um, then you would most definitely see it here. So let me actually press control and number two, and then that we get this kind of split view. And then here again, this is just a different ortho view, which, or just viewport view, in which we can change our view. In this case, we want space bar number five to get this UV view. And here, of course, we are seeing how these UVs are transferred in our 3D view. Okay, so what we can also change is this grain tolerance and the, the, the less tolerance we set, Houdini tries to actually merge more of these islands that are now disconnected, as far as I understood. Or actually it's vice versa. So if we, if we go with the lower value, we can see that Houdini is actually trying to cut more, but then these shapes are like more correct in terms of like, for example, this circular shape is pretty much perfect now, but the problem is that we now have plenty of over, you, um, overlapping uh, polygons here. So this would not work for sure. So we can try to uh, make this value a bit higher and again it's 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 not really uh, good results these planks are actually good in my opinion uh, Houdini did a really nice job there 
but for these um unfortunately for these rings um did didn't do a great job now we can we can actually um use this uh, on certain group so if you go you choose wood only and this is this group or if i go into the collection and enable this lab groups or connected geometry i can see here in my polygon or primitive component mode that i have these three groups and if i click on one of those uh, i will actually select these or just i will have a brief overview for highlighting the viewport what actually this group is so for the wood and we have these elements and then if we go under our auto uvs we can see that i set my group to to a wood and now uv auto uv is basically trying to only work on these uh, polygons or or this group which are, which is wood so then we can just repeat the same let's select steel press q to repeat the last action or last node and fortunately this node doesn't recognize the group that i selected so we would have to choose the group from here and then we can then again go to our selection mode select bolts and then q to to execute again and unfortunately we need then again select bolts here and now all these nodes are actually operating on just one group not the whole object like before like initially we set set it up but actually on the three different groups which is in some cases a good thing oops wrong button sorry i wanted to display this group so that we can concentrate on on this part here let's just make this look like this and now we can just play this will be faster so less things to less geometry to calculate so we can play with the merge threshold so merge basically will decide how much merging of the islands will happen and now if i bring this value up i can already see this seems to be a little bit uh, better result yeah that we go here we can see that there is basically no stretching and another way we can check the stretching is if you go under the uv view uh, we can go or sorry uv uh, vertex is if you go under the display menu and select either uv overlap so this will show us if there is any overlap in the uv space and then here we can check if there are any uv back faces or basically flip normals and then here we the distortion we can see it either red or blue color and i believe that the red is stretching show you red would show you a stretching in the mesh and then blue skewing if i'm not wrong but here we can see that we have a lot of problems so it's not good but for these planks uh, pretty much we have a perfect result so we would have to play a bit more with these results to to get something more decent but anyway um like i said i usually just go with the default settings and in most cases for what i do i get a decent results and if you're using something like substance painter armor paint uh, marmoset toolbug uh, recent one um, basically all these painting tool that that have triplanar projections then you can really do a lot even with not perfect uv so that's why you're usually using auto uv and then everything else can be fixed in substance painter 
not everything, but in, in most cases, just works, works fine. Okay. So let's now go over some other tools. And if I press V, I can see we'll go uh, over the UV project and UV texture, and then at the end, UV flatten. And of course, UV layout, and I will talk about UV shade. Basically, UV shade is just uh, if you have UVs, you can actually put this node um, after the some UV uh, unwrap node, and then you would you would see shading of of well your UVs. And then under the adjust, these are just as they say. Um, they work pretty much uh, the same as in 3D viewport. So UV edit, you know, if you move some points, uh, we will invoke this node. Um, brush is like a magnet tool. We can basically go over points and make some finer adjustments. But I, I never use it. So yeah, UV transform like uh, UV trans like transform tool in in 3D space works the same and then UV smooth also works the same and then UV fuse also works the same so it's just fusing the points so for the next tool let's go with the UV texture so let me select this group and let's see if this node will work as I would expect so yeah you see now automatically because I have selected the group um this node recognized that and automatically set our group to wood so if i now control two and i now check my projection here but immediately we can see that this cannot work this here is fine actually perfect projection but for this part it's it's really not uh, that good so what that means is that we can use 10 of these UV textures node um, and, and isolate the, the, the part of your geometry on which we want to project this tool and, and we can get perfect results like that. But this is not how I prefer to work. So either I use auto UV or UV flatten, but UV flatten we will, we will check the, as the last step. So I just want to go through these uh, tools just quickly so that you know that they are there and you can use them. They can be really powerful if, you, if you're using them like with smaller groups of your geometry, then they can really do a good job if you really need it. But yeah, I'm not using this like that. So in my case, they're not that useful. And we can see here that this is just not uh, it's just not good UV projection. So we see, yeah, we don't see. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, we can immediately see the results here. Now this one, I have no idea what is it, how to use it. So yeah, not. All of these are self-explanatory. But so we have orthographic view, we have polar view, and we have cylindrical view. So I would say these one, two, three, three are most useful. And then I don't know, maybe face it's you know, in some some weird cases, but I would say no. And then this perspective from camera so i just want to show you this one quickly so if i add the camera in my viewport and um, here we can say uv project now naming is not really the important i'm just making sure that i know that this camera is used for my uv projection so i think i can just say control c to copy this path and then go back and then in here i can just copy paste and now i go here put this camera here close 
or sorry, log the testing. And now if I enable the UV texture display, we can see that as we move the camera, our projection is applied object. Now all of these are uh, already have UV projection. That's why when I enable this, you can see uh, that there is some UV projections on other objects too. So this camera is only affecting this object because that's right. Because basically this node, okay, and in the setting. Now we can also change the angle. That's all, and scale of course. And see how this affects our UV space. So the the point is to have <laughs> everything in in this space, unless we are using UDIMs. But we are not going to talk about UDIMs today. So okay, uh, I think this node is also good to go away, and I can also delete this camera. Go back. Okay, and the next node would be UV unwrap, which can be found here under the texture and then UV unwrap. So let's try to make a wood selection again and just try to invoke UV unwrap. And again, this node will also work with this uh, technique. And uh, to me, it seems that this node does a much better job with. Just unwrapping this part of the mesh from the get-go. So here we can change the spacing of the the uh, islands. Okay, so every every um, every how would I say every <laughs> unwrapped piece here that is disconnected from each other it's called island. So here we can play with the spacing. Now scale can be stretched, which I don't recommend because then we are stretching um, our geometry or UVs. And we can see that they are becoming red. And then here none, I guess, I'm not sure why this is here, but uniform usually always works best. And then for the layout, now this is kind of weird. It can be a strip. So Houdini will, would try to um, put everything in just a line or strip and keep it, keep it like that. I, I guess this could be useful if you are working on some really not that important details, like maybe these bolts. So in our case, instead of wood, maybe we would say, okay, give me bolts here. And then they would be very tiny, almost invisible. Uh, maybe we can play with these settings and see if there is any setting that make this better. So. Basically, no, there is a, so you see, in this case, UV unwrap, no, really, really is doing a bad job because all of this is super blue and yeah, it just, it just doesn't work. So, and here we can actually, like from these planes, if we invoke the tool, we can see that how, how Houdini tried to project um, the geometry. So we have five planes here, one, two, three, four, five, then four, projection will go from these uh, angles, I believe. And then if you have six, it's more like a cubic. And then this one is, um, I don't know, pyramidal, I don't know how this shape is called, but yeah, now even if we change the angle, we can see the, the changes, but, in this case, nothing really helps for the bolts in this case. So again, in, in, in the bolt, um, well, again, case, 
this would actually not work so unfortunately yeah. now let me just show the quick sheet here and maybe i should just maybe i just just use the uvs delete this one then show you how this works so we can no, I, I believe this is a bug because it doesn't do actually anything when it should but i also believe there is a yeah you visualize from labs tools does better job and we can visualize the different uv islands um, we can decide the scale of our texture and we can actually bring a, even a even a different map do i have any i don't have any picture right now but there are some different kind of um uv texture map that you can use but in our case maybe see mm, mm, might be that here houdini has own textures it's not but yeah anyway you can you can bring your own so that will do the job now i lost the, this texture because i deleted it but i can bring this again uh, this is also really neat so we can actually see our unwrapping in the 3d viewport which if you are learning like it can be really really cool to see what is actually happening which i believe it's really it's really cool and then here we can visualize seams now this is like 3d seams which are too thick so if we, we keep this at some decent thickness size we we are getting something like that so yeah that would be for uh also visualize and uh quick shade node so just use this one instead of quick shade it's just better and, and more useful and uh yeah let's now let's now go with our last node which i pretty much not the last node sorry yeah it's a last uv unwrap node it's and it's a uv flatten so what i like to do here is when using that node i basically like to explode stuff first so in this case uh, i'm not sure why i'm getting this uh, what's happening huh. interesting i never had this before so let me see if i can just operate on everything yeah so again i'm i'm doing this to just have a better access to some of the angles or geometry that i need to unwrap so it's it's kind of very useful so let's go with the planks first okay and let's just uh, go with v and then let's see uv flatten and now again uv flatten is invoked on my wood selection or my wood group and we are getting something like this now this is it seems good but uh, there are you can see problems here so we can't actually use this or even we could because if i go up and don't use our explode we can see that in these crevices we can't actually see anything and uh, outside 
planes are basically good, pretty much perfect. Um, we we could we could go with this result. So, but not in my case. I want to show you guys how this node works. So uh, let's begin. Um, I will also select wood and hide everything else. And now I can just concentrate this node. Visibility should go up. And uh, yeah, let's invoke it. Now, when you invoke UV Flatten, you automatically get this automatically get, get this splitted view and usually what i do I, I make sure that this enable menu layout is disabled because now when i when i'm cutting you will see now the difference so if i make cut here and here my uv space or my uvs are basically automatically getting packed okay but if I don't have this enabled, I will do my cuts and I will get results like these. So, and this will be annoying, okay, because at some point it will, there will be too much overlapping UV, uh, UVs and I'm just not going to be able to, to see what's happening. So just disable these and now you can see that Houdini automatically packing correctly and we can see what's happening in our UV view. So let's go to finally uh, making some seams and actually this tool has uh, some neat tools for this. So we can as usual do our selection so if you press left mouse button on any of these uh, edges we will only select an edge we will not make a cut what we need to do is we need to press and hold shift and then left mouse button and then we can see that we are cutting but now cutting like this would be such a pain and also we can cut from here okay but the problem here is that we are losing our view from the or or focus from from this geometry because Dini automatically uh, packing these islands so what i am doing is i'm always pretty much making my cuts uh, from the 3d view and this shift left, left mouse click would be just crazy if we would have to do this for all the pieces. So what we can do is we can cut a loop. So let's press and hold shift. Let's make a first cut and then second edge. We would not press the left mouse button, but the middle mouse button. Okay. So let's see. Ah, okay, sorry. So shift, shift, hold shift, press and hold shift. A and then middle mouse button. And now we are getting this loop. Now we are cutting the loop. So let's let's repeat because I, I screwed it up a bit. So shift, press shift and hold, then click left mouse button to select first um, edge. And then again shift A on your keyboard, and then we can see that if we go to this edge we are basically highlighting what we're gonna cut but if you press left mouse button we're gonna cut only this edge but if we do the same so if we do the same and instead of left mouse button click middle mouse button we're gonna cut through whole loop and this loop will stop on the pole or triangle so if there is no triangles or poles, here you can see it goes all the way around. So that's important to know. So in this case, I would need to do this, this, then here, here, and voila. 
and then what I can also do is I can actually the yeah so what I can also do is simply shift press uh, shift a and double click middle mouse and that will also cut me a loop like that and it's 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 pretty fast and uh, we can now this selecting again same as shift only with control so now this is the bug even if we do the deselect we will still see this highlighting but if we try to cut here okay why is this not yeah okay see now it's okay and if i cut for example here we see that this highlighting is gone this is a bug and a bummer but yeah what can you do so let's continue with the uh, cutting again shift a middle mouse button or it seems i don't even have to this might be a change behavior i'm not sure i was sure i would have to do a double click but it seems that okay just shift a middle mouse button and we are cutting the loop edge which is pretty fast what what is also very nice with this tool let's see if my play here of distortion is yeah i think this is more cleaner okay this sometimes doesn't cut so i was right so if if one click of uh middle mouse doesn't work just press it twice work as expected so um i believe i don't have to go through all of these right now it will take me a long time we are already on 30 minutes so just continue doing this and that's it let's say i'm i'm happy with what i have okay let me finish this one okay now maybe maybe i wouldn't cut here the so this event with with control a you're doing the same thing and cutting or just um, removing the themes from these objects i believe that that would be also a good cutting it will, it will, we would have a less visible seams okay here this this would be like a really good uv unwrapping because i mean in this case like the back side and the these sides would not even be seen so like who cares but yeah now you know how to use this tool and um, i believe you will have a good experience now there is more to it so let me see now what i also like is let's say let's say this is done so i can just delete visibility and now again go here what i also like to do is just remove this into other space because i will later use another node to pack everything together because now i want to invoke another uv flatten 
on a different group and in this case i will use this group okay and then just press q and now we have uv flatten on deal group and i also want to do the same with visibility so only selected and again i put it here and display here now see why there is no this is weird okay so you see this node also have a different method of unwrapping and this is a perfect case where spectral wouldn't work at all so we need to use angle based unwrapping and uh, we get something like this but it's not ideal definitely so again let's start cutting let's invoke the tool and so you, we, we need to be sure that we are invoking this tool and best how you would know that we are invoking this tool is first we would see the split view and then the second thing we would see that uv flatten is displayed here and if you don't want to see this for some reason yeah you can you can always okay oh sorry um you can always with spacebar b just isolate the view you want to be in so with this in mind let's uh just quickly unwrap these and i want to show you one neat feature also now before we 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 usually like would have to cut like this we, we for example if we have teams like this and now we just want to make a cut from this seam to this seam from what i know before we would have to do something like this so select the edge and then with shift a we would have to cut like this because before if you would click double double click on the loop we would basically um, select the whole loop but with this node this is not the case anymore so now if we shift a double click or just middle click once we are actually cutting and then this cut is stopping whenever it detects another seam which is super super useful like i cannot express how useful this this is so again this will be projected from above and then here make a seam and also with side now by no mean this is a perfect uv unwrapping the more dirty approach but with substance as long as we don't we don't have stretching substance can work with these uv maps not in all cases but yeah and here guys we we we, we have a decent um, uv unwrap now another thing that we can do with the uv flatten is we can actually make some of these elements like completely flat and straight so we can see that there is a difference from here to here from these elements so what we can do is let me just see i think it's uh so if we activate this rectify group of quads and if we hold shift and left mouse and then press left mouse button on this group or or the island we can see that we can make a perfect um line from it now we can see that that we have a stretching here because it's red so this is not well this is not always that helpful but i believe this could actually work so there is no like these these um uv texture here is not not um 
actually skewed or stretched by any means. I believe we would select this. So you can see now we if if I select again I need to make sure I'm if I go to my component um mode in this primitive and if I select uh double click on any of this island we can see that I am basically also selecting geometry so not only the island but geometry and we can see that we have our UV edit node here and now I can just move these uh, wherever I like so this is how we would manually move these around also we can rotate we can scale like a usual uh, edit node same goes for uv transform and we can stack these uv nodes as much as we like and then at the end what i would do so let me just leave this node and let's say this is okay and what i can do like let's delete this node I'm not gonna I'm not gonna unwrap bolts, but actually I might unwrap these. So let me invoke button. I need here so this one cutters two. And also we can pin things uh, which I don't really use and then align vertices which I really also don't use. Uh, rectify we already went through it and then here we can just straighten the some of the edge loops if we need and that's pretty much all to it but i'm really not <laughs> i'm really not using these tools uh, at their full potential because i don't really see the need for it at least at least not in my case so And okay, let's say let's say we are happy with this. What we have, we can see that the rest of our UVs are on this side. So somehow now we need to merge them and also uh, pack them a bit better. So the next thing what we can do is just go here or let's see, mm, let's go outside of this node. Let's delete UV explode. We can save, Control S to save, and then here as the last step, what we can do is invoke UV layout. And now what UV layout does is taking all these nodes that came before UV layout and tries to uh, pack the unwrap wrapping uvs as best as possible again uh, we can do our uv layout based on groups um, we can use some additional themes which i, I never do um, we have some packing methods that we can uh, also utilize now we can also use udims but yeah, not uh, this time. Again, padding. How much space there will be between these islands. And yeah, standard stuff that, that we can use. And then here uh, we can actually choose the resolution of our UV space and with that guys the, the last thing we can actually do now this would be the done job we can now export and do our UVs of course this would not be probably acceptable results now there was a red anymore okay this actually I think that this would work with triplanar projection it would be just fine if not, we can easily just go back and fix those port again. 
at least that's very fast to do with Houdini. So another thing I just wanted to show you before we end this is this node and it is called oh man UV uh, yeah labs export UV wireframe. So what this node can do is it can actually export our UV wireframe. So in my case, now there will be no PNG to select, but we can actually export this as a PNG. And here we can choose the wire width scale. So one maybe would be too much. So we can actually see from the 3D viewport how thick our wireframe would, wireframes would be. Okay. Before I maybe, maybe I should just show you one more thing here. So if we want to rotate this, yeah, we can use, can definitely use um, the UV edit, but we can also use um, like UV transform and then move it, rotate it. We can also use control shift as as usual as you would expect in 3d view so let's say uh let's say i want to do this now i'm using edit and i don't know maybe i want to scale it down for some reason again i can go back here invoke these here go down my UV edit. I don't know. Let's say this is fine. Window here. I need to move this a little bit down. Maybe this one too. And now let's say this is something we needed. I mean, it would be easier to paint on like manually on on blanks position like this. So there is there is definitely um some good situations where it's uh, it's a good practice to to um actually manually pack your geometry or UVs so that it's easier for you to to paint manually. So okay, let's just go to this node then again. Let's hit render. Within it did its job, and then if we open our Windows Explorer and open this map in, in, I don't know, Photoshop. I'm using Affinity Photo. We can see that manage to basically export our wireframes. And in some cases, whoops. In some cases, um, this might be useful because now we can we can paint if we want for some reason like this and then export this um, texture and load it for whatever you need it and uh, yeah these uh, this texture would be um, applied correctly to your existing texture here so yeah guys i believe this is it um i maybe will record one more video on uv unwrapping to, to go more in depth with these tools but i really don't believe it's necessary because if you want to do like a serious uv unwrapping uh, no matter which 3d software you use you would probably want to go with uv rhythm I believe it's called UV Rhythm and because that's pretty much the, the industry standard for UV unwrapping and, and Houdini even have um, these UV uh, Rhythm nodes which I don't know how to use because I don't have UV Rhythm but uh, I'm sure they, they somehow work together if you have UV Rhythm so I guess that's also good to know so yeah, guys, um, what I showed should be enough for you to do decent uh, UV unwrapping, even a solid one, depends on what you do. 
and hopefully this will be helpful for the this project that you are doing with me hopefully if you are doing it and i believe guys in the next video if not uv unwrapping um we will go over some exporting situations and then yeah let's see i'm kind of super busy so that's why these videos uh, are a bit slow to uh, publish but yeah i'm not stressing so for those who can wait uh, it's great for those who are a bit impatient sorry guys i'm doing my best but anyway without further ado guys make sure to stay safe and uh, see you in the next video bye bye